Hey everybody, welcome to another one of Chris's motherfucking B reviews. That's right, I'm excited. Why? I'll tell you why. And it ain't because of that kitty and heat I got behind me still. Alright, today, I don't even know if you can see that I've done it or not, but I did my last full time midnight shift. Woo! Hallelujah! No more, well, I can't say no more midnight shifts because I could still, you know, I could still pick one up here or there if I really want to, um, which I will most likely need to at some point. That aside, I'm crazy, and it's time for us to be checking out a Muskoka Brewery Mad Tom IPA. We got a 355 milliliter bottle at 6.4% ABV, which is quite typical of a IPA. Uh, alcohol percentage should be higher than your average beer. Now the back, is, <coughs> it's got a little paragraph, very little. It says, inspired by late night stories around the fire. Muskoka, Mad Tom, will instantly grab your attention. Dry hopped with Chinook and Centennial hops, this IPA has a vibrant aroma, depth of flavor, and crispy citrusy undertow like no other. So brace yourself and crack one open for old mad Tom and uh, thunder or founder would be Gary McMullen venture off the beaten path that's what it says uh, this is brewed in Bracebridge Ontario Canada you can check out MuskokaBrewery.com and handcrafted with no preservatives and just to give you an idea of how chill this beer is they got a picture of like one of those cottage chairs that we would have, so that's pretty cool looking trademark there. And another thing that's cool is the guy is kind of like, I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, there you go. He's in the water. He's holding up uh, a, a bottle of a barrel of beers, holding him up, and the canoe is down, down. We got another floating barrel in the background. Okay, all the boring stuff has been over with now. I'm going to pour it into my wonderful Pilsner glass. That's right. Crazy. And, uh, yeah, check this out. The My lighter, I started destroying the label, so I just took, I took a knife and I spliced the label all the way around so that it wasn't going to affect the label anymore. Oh, yeah. Here goes. Ooh, got some... Very, very cool smoke there for the first time in one of my reviews. For some reason, my camera just doesn't pick up on it too well. Now, this being a 355 milliliter bottle, this is a probably a 360 milliliter glass, so I'm going to have to be real careful with this one. Now, when this beer gets really, really cold, just like most beers, there's not very much head. So, there we go. I got a really cold one here. Check that out. Got a, seen a lot of little floaties in there for the first time. I never really paid attention to that. I have opened this beer, beer once before. Um, yeah, that's a very nice color. It looks uh, very much like an IPA. Some IPAs uh, have like a darker, like red tinged color to them. This one is just straight up yellow and orange all the way through. And at the top, uh, you can see that it's very dense. And at the bottom, uh, much more clear. Much more clear. I'll try to give you an idea. See? There you go. Give you an idea of how clear the bottom is. You see my knuckles here? No, you don't. Oh, oh! Dripping all over the place. Oh, shit. One thing I keep forgetting about this glass is that it's so small. But I do like this glass. It's a good glass for my IPAs, even though I prefer... Uh... Shit, I'm starting to lose something here. All right, let's go, let's go in. Very sweet, very uh, IPA aroma. Uh, very, very much like an IPA. I actually uh, found out from uh, an LCBO uh, beer ambassador that this is an American style IPA. So I've I've had Eastern and Western IPAs, uh, West Coast, East Coast, West Coast IPAs. Let's see, uh, 
what the American IPA brings us. Okay. American IPA. This is how it goes. As it's going down, very refreshing, yet sweet. You finish it, and you are immediately overwhelmed with, I'm not going to say an extremely high, but a high alcohol content. Like It, it tastes like it might be like an 8% beer, uh, even though we're only dealing with the 6.3 or 6.8, 6.4 almost in between. Um, now one thing that is very distinct about this IPA, some people love this, this is what makes it an acquired taste, uh, and some people do not. Um, there is a very bitter, very syrupy aftertaste. I'm not typically a huge fan of that. Um, that being said, if you want to eliminate that taste from this beer, I highly recommend start uh, putting it in the freezer and pulling it out just before freezing and then drinking it out of a bottle. You will eliminate uh, that taste that people may not like as much as possible. It's also a pretty sneaky way of weaseling somebody who doesn't have such an acquired taste into drinking this kind of beer. So just a couple little tips there. Now, like a very good beer should be, um, lace for every layer of sip you drink. <coughs> I've had some other IPAs. Lace is way too heavy. Those are also ones that are much less bitter and um, sweet and syrupy. So maybe that could be part of the problem or part of the cause. Um, yeah. So at the top, Remember, it was very, very dark. Now it's all light. Okay, so chances are, as I'm getting closer to the bottom of this glass, it might have the opposite effect. It might become less bittersweet, less syrupy. Um, generally, beers that have strong tastes, like barley, beers like this, they usually tend to to be stronger near the ending. But this one might be the opposite. I don't know why. Never trust the squirrel, people, because they'll bite your nuts. I know, because it's happened to me. That's why I bought the shirt. He didn't bite my nuts, though. <laughs> very, very acquired taste beer. It's like... You know, some people out there say that they can eat anything, but then they won't touch an olive or they won't touch an onion. It's an acquired taste. I actually liked this more the first couple times I purchased it, but the more and more I've started to drink this beer, the, the less interested I've become. That will make it... Uh, this will probably be the last time I buy this beer. <coughs> I don't know if I can really pick up on any like specific citrusy or grapefruit type style flavors, which you usually pick up in IPAs. Just very bittersweet. Yeah, and the further closer I do get to the end, it does become less uh, bittersweet. <coughs> I can say that now for sure. And. Uh, yeah, for a rating, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. And for boys and girls, I mean over 19. <laughs> um, I don't know, you know what, I'm going to give this like a, a 3 out of 5. Woo! Alright people, thanks for joining me in another one of Chris's Bee Reviews. Don't drink and drive, but drink responsibly. Cheers.